Sam invited his friends to dinner to show them the engagement ring he bought for his girlfriend. They sat down, and he placed the ring on the table. Suddenly, the lights flickered off and the room went dark. When the lights came back on, the ring was missing. He called the manager and they interviewed his friends. Julie said she hadn't even gotten the chance to see the ring before the room went dark. Roger said he saw the ring's sparkly reflection as the lights went out, but nothing else. Michael said he was searching for his phone to snap a photo of the ring. The manager took a good look at everyone and knew who did it. You have 10 seconds to figure it out. It was Julie. When they sat down, she wasn't wearing gloves. Now she is. Liam's parents are police officers. They were working on a dangerous case and asked Liam to keep it a secret. After a week, he received a message from his mom telling him, Son, we're okay. Don't contact anyone. We've sent you $5,317. Liam thought the message was suspicious. He checked his bank account, but he hadn't received any money. He immediately called the chief of police. Why? Here are your 9 seconds. If you flip the number 5317 upside down and horizontally, it reads lies. His parents are in danger, and they're communicating with him in code. While walking down the street, Susie found 10 bucks. Three people were sitting on the roadside, and it was clear they needed some money. So she decided to help one of them. Kyle said, I need some money for shelter tonight. If you have something to spare, it will help me a lot. Jim said, You're a good girl. I don't have anything, and I don't know what you look like because I'm blind. But 10 bucks will buy me enough food for today and tomorrow. Susan said, I need money to feed my dog. He is at home and he's starving. Susan knew exactly who really needed help. You've got 8 seconds. She helped Kyle. Jim must have seen the $10, which is why he asked for the exact amount, even though he said he was blind. And Susan doesn't appear to be in much need since she has a place to stay. Mike is an undercover police officer. He had been following a suspect at the train station when the suspect exchanged a briefcase with another person. Michael followed the suspect further. The target walked into a huge corporate building. It was filled with security guards, and Mike couldn't get in. He saw through a window that the target went to the 10th floor. When Mike went back to his car, he found three uniforms in his truck. An electrician's uniform, a police officer's uniform, a window cleaner's uniform. You've got 7 seconds to pick one for Mike. The electrician would need to show some ID, so Mike would be outed as an imposter. The police officer would need to show some ID too, and that would ruin his undercover status. But the window cleaner doesn't have to go inside the building. He can climb up the window and pretend to clean them. Sarah called Detective Archie at midday on Monday to tell him she found her husband unconscious on the floor. She had been out shopping all morning, but when she visited her husband's home office to ask if he was hungry, he was lying on the ground. The ambulance came and collected her husband, but the detective didn't let anyone else leave. There were three other people in the house. The cook said, I've been cooking all day. The couple is having a dinner party tonight, and I'm swamped. The security guard said, I was installing security cameras to make sure everything will be safe tonight. The house cleaner said, I've been cleaning the living room, the sitting area, and all guest bathrooms to prepare for tonight, since everyone will be indoors. Who is lying? Here are your 6 seconds.
It's the security guard. The cameras he's installing are outside. The house cleaner said this was an indoor party. One Friday afternoon, Shane, the CEO of a huge company, called the police to report a crime. The CEO said, "Uh, They broke into my office and smashed all my furniture. Then they hijacked the door and now it won't close. When they hijacked the safe, they took all my documents. I have only one key to the safe and nobody else has access to it. The detective immediately took Shane to the police station as the main suspect. Why? Here are your 5 seconds. If someone hijacked the safe, it wouldn't close, just like the door. But Shane was able to open and close his safe with his key. Michael is a private investigator and was going on a cruise to Norway. One morning, the captain came to his cabin needing help. The captain said he was studying some old 100-year-old maps and fell asleep on the bridge. When he awoke, his valuable watch was gone. Michael called in the last three people who were on the bridge that evening to interview them. The sailor said he was trying to uncover the lifeboats because there's a cyclone in Norway. The passengers might need to abandon ship. The cook said he was taking inventory to see what supplies he needed from Norway. The chief engineer said he was headed to the engine room with two other sailors because one of the engines had a problem. Michael knew exactly who was lying. You've got four seconds. It was the sailor. None of the lifeboats are uncovered. And if there's a cyclone, putting people on lifeboats in stormy seas would be more dangerous than staying aboard. Sally went to Hawaii for six weeks for her summer vacation. When she returned, her mansion was trashed and her dog was missing. She called the police and they started their investigation. Detective Michael noticed there were no signs of a break-in and there was fresh fruit on the table. He interviewed three people. Sally's son said, I never visit my mom's house. I'm allergic to her dog. The maid said, I came here a week ago, cleaned the house, fed the dog, brought some food, and then I left. The butler said, I was on vacation at the same time as Sally. I came back yesterday. Here are my tickets. Michael figured out who was lying in three seconds. It's the butler. Even though the dates match, the tickets show 2019, not 2020. Lisa went to the movie theater on Halloween night with her husband. He was running late, so she sat down and waited for him. When the lights turned off, two people arrived and sat beside her. The one on the left had red spots on his shirt. He held a bag with red splatters that contained something very suspicious, and he had scratches all over his face. The one on the right had pale skin, bright red eyes, and he was holding a creepy doll. Lisa needs to go to the bathroom, and one of these people is her husband. Should she go right or left? Here are your 3 seconds. She should go left. Since it's Halloween and both people are wearing creepy costumes, look at their fingers. The guy on the left has a wedding ring like Lisa. It's her husband. The guy on the right holds a creepy doll that seems to be alive. Lucy is hosting a career guidance conference to inspire young students to pursue their dreams. She invited one person from each profession. When the conference ended, Lucy discovered the most expensive painting in the meeting room was gone. She called the police, and they searched the briefcases of the last three professionals to leave the room. The electrical engineer has a bag filled with wire, circuit boards, small screwdrivers, and solder. The plumber has a wrench, a hammer, and some plastic pipes. The veterinarian has a laser, a hammer, a drill, a fluorescent light, and a pair of latex gloves. Which of the three is dishonest? You've got two seconds. The veterinarian. Most of the things in his bag aren't related to his profession, and he used the gloves to avoid leaving any fingerprints. Da 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 da.
Two best friends, Jack and Tyler, went to a tropical island to surf and have some rest. After an active day at sea, they bought a large watermelon and ate it. In an hour or so, Tyler felt unwell and lost consciousness. Luckily, he was taken to a hospital in time. The doctors there managed to save his life. But Jack couldn't wrap his mind around what had happened. Both guys ate the same watermelon. Tyler didn't have any kind of an allergy. Then how come Jack was perfectly fine? Jack didn't eat watermelon seeds, and Tyler did. Whatever substance poisoned him was in the seeds. Jerry got a job as a security guard at a supermarket. On his first day, he heard an alarm go off when a young woman was leaving the store. He stopped her and asked whether she had a receipt. She did, so Jerry checked it and the girl's bag. Everything looked okay, but the man still called the police. Why? The date on the receipt was wrong. The girl had bought all the products the day before and then came back the next day to steal the same stuff. A wealthy businessman was poisoned at a restaurant. When the police arrived, they questioned all other visitors who were there at that time. Albert said he'd been talking on the phone with his brother. Judy told the police she had been waiting in a bathroom line. Diana said she had been writing a report for her boss. And Philip said he had been putting on his clothes, ready to leave. Who's the culprit? It's Judy. Besides her, there were only three other visitors in the restaurant, and all of them were busy. There couldn't be any bathroom line. Catherine was a maid at the Smith's house. One day, she called the police and asked them to come as soon as possible. When they arrived, the woman told the officers the house owners were away on vacation. She was the only one to look after the house. In the morning, she went grocery shopping. On her way back, a man in a mask ran up to her and made her open the door and let him in. He tied Catherine to a chair, took all the valuables he could find, and sneaked out of the house. The woman started to shout for help. After some time, a passerby heard her shouting, entered the house, and untied her. Then he went away without leaving his name or phone number. After the detective heard this story, he arrested Catherine. Why? The Smith's house is away from the town, in a forest. There aren't likely to be any passers-by in that area. Plus, the fence is high and thick. Even if Catherine had been shouting, no one would have heard her. Janice rented an apartment with three other girls. Once, her mom came to visit her. She gave her daughter some money. Janice put the bills under a book lying on her desk and went to see her mom off. When she returned, there was no money in the room. The girl questioned her neighbors. Natalie answered she had just returned from her morning run. Brittany told Janice she'd wanted to read the book. After taking it, she put the money in the middle drawer. Kayla said she had entered the room just once to look for her scarf. Who took the money? It was Brittany. The desk has no middle drawer. A unique diamond was exhibited in a popular museum. No wonder it was guarded day and night. Only small groups of people were allowed to enter the room with the diamond. One of such groups had just left when the security guards heard a shrill alarm go off. They dashed inside and found a man who seemed to be as shocked as they were. The diamond was in its place. The guards searched the man and found nothing unusual – a phone, a wallet, a lighter, a bottle with water, and a camera. They let the man go. But soon, it was announced the diamond had been stolen. What happened?
the man replaced the real thing with a fake gem. After that, he hid the famous diamond in his bottle with water. Two girls, Tina and Betty, got lost in the forest. After some time, each of them found a clearing with lots of berries growing there. By that moment, the girls had been starving. They decided to snack on the berries. But for one of them, it's going to be a grave mistake. Which girl is that? Betty is eating the berries from endangered plants. She's not supposed to do it, but they won't make her sick. Tina is munching on the berries that have knocked off a bird. It means they might be poisonous for the girl, too. Uh Uh-oh. Maria was walking down the street when someone slammed into her. It was a man who immediately started to apologize. The girl looked at him attentively and said, It's okay, Mark. How come she knew the man's name if he wasn't a celebrity and she had never seen him before? Maria knew the man's name because he was her friend's twin brother. Eric needs to get some documents from his colleague's safe. If he doesn't, he'll get fired the next day. But it turns out to be a tricky task. The safe has a password, and Eric has no idea how to crack it. It's a combination of letters O-T-T-F-F-S-S, with the last three letters missing. What are they? The missing letters are E and T. All of them are the first letters of the numbers from 1 to 10. One evening, Christian went to the backyard to enjoy some peanut cookies. He didn't want to leave any crumbs inside the house because his wife was allergic to nuts. But when the man opened the bag, he found just one cookie. Christian questioned his three kids. Alice, the eldest, puffed, Don't you remember I'm on a diet? Kelly, the middle child, said, I was studying upstairs. I didn't have time for cookies. And Joe, the youngest, answered he had been too busy helping his mom to make a peanut butter cake. So who gobbled down Christian sweets? It was Joe. Christian's wife is allergic to nuts. It would be too risky to make a cake with peanut butter. A rich man's house was burgled. Strangely, the thieves didn't take anything except for one painting. When the police arrived, the confused house owner told them he had bought the canvas at auction. It didn't cost much. He had no idea why the criminals had chosen to steal it. Pretty soon, the police detectives figure out what was so special about the painting. Can you? It wasn't about the painting itself, but about its expensive and unique frame. Mr. Johnson disliked modern art. One day, he ran into the City Art Museum and caused damage to several paintings, which cost millions of dollars. Instead of being arrested, though, he was invited to the manager of the gallery. The man started to thank Mr. Johnson and promised he would be rewarded. How come? Mr. Johnson was a firefighter. The water he used to put out the flames damaged several masterpieces. But he still managed to extinguish the fire, saving many more precious exhibits. Richard had a collection of beautiful paintings. One day, while he was away, his favorite one got stolen. The police suspected one of Richard's neighbors. Nicole said she had been out of town. She returned home just an hour ago and was so tired after a long drive that she immediately went to bed. Dennis said he had been getting ready to paint his house, but since it didn't seem the rain would stop anytime soon, he went to the movies instead. Julie answered her sister had been feeling unwell. That's why Julie was busy looking after her little nephew. Who was lying?
It was Nicole. It had been raining for the whole day. If the woman had returned home just an hour ago, the road under her car would be wet. A wealthy businessman had two sons, Gary and Jeffrey. The loving father doted on his boys. But unfortunately, he had a lot of enemies who often threatened to harm his sons. One day, Gary was rushed to a hospital. He had been poisoned. Jeffrey, scared out of his mind but feeling okay, went with his brother. When the businessman arrived, he asked Jeffrey what had happened. We were playing soccer and got awfully thirsty. Some man gave each of us a bottle of water and we drank it all. But then, how come Gary is in a hospital bed, poisoned, while Jeffrey is fine? The water the boys drank was okay. The poison covered the bottlenecks. Unlike Gary, Jeffrey didn't touch his bottle with his lips while drinking. Kyle has been caught by a mad professor and locked in a room with only one door and no windows. Is the scientist going to experiment on the poor guy? Kyle has to get out of there as soon as possible. After searching the room, he finds four keys. On the door, there are four keyholes with a number under each of them. Kyle has to match the keys and keyholes, and there's hardly any time left. The professor's car has just stopped near the house. The digits on the door match the number of the angles the geometric shapes on the keys have. Three people were stopped at the security check of an international airport. They were suspected of smuggling different stuff out of the country. The first man was heading for a beach resort. In his suitcase, there were a lot of things needed at the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second man had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and a bottle of expensive shampoo. Who's the smuggler? It's the third guy. He's bald! Why would he need shampoo? Young fashion designer Robert was preparing for his first show. He was excited and a bit anxious, so he took a break to steady his nerves in a quiet corner. But when it was time for him to present his collection, he was nowhere to be found. In an hour or so, a security guard saw him in the bathroom, lying on the floor. Someone had hit him on the head. The police had three suspects. Maya, one of the models, said she had had problems with her dress. I didn't even have time to leave the dressing room. Catherine, one of the guests, answered she was Robert's huge fan. I've been wearing his clothes for years. Why would I hit him? Sam, the designer's assistant, said he had rushed to the nearest coffee shop to get Robert an Americano to calm him down. Can you figure out the culprit? It was Catherine. That day, it was Robert's first show. Then how could she be wearing his clothes for years? Ethan and his girlfriend Anne went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a man and a woman. The man, bearded and rough-looking, had a shovel in his hands. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Follow me. I've been here longer than him. I know where the exit is. Who should the guys believe? Ethan and Anne decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for more than a week, why does she look so tidy and has fresh flowers in her hair? Mickey wakes up locked in a basement. The guy has no idea how he got there, probably through a hatch in the ceiling. There are also three doors leading out of the room. 
Behind the first one, there's a deep pit with metal spikes at the bottom. The second door leads to a lake with hungry piranhas. And behind the third door, there are crocodiles. Suddenly, the room starts to fill with water. Which door should Mickey choose to escape? He should pick the first door. Once the pit is filled with water, the guy will be able to swim over the spikes. Adam's car has gotten broken right in the middle of a deserted forest road. But the worst thing? It's winter, snowdrifts are huge, and the wind is freezing cold. Adam has to get to the nearest town and fast. But if he follows the first path, he'll have to deal with hungry wolves. The second goes through the area inhabited by bears. And if he takes the second road, he'll have to cross a river covered with thin ice. Which is the safest way? Adam should sneak through the bear's territory. These animals sleep in the winter. Lauren has cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turns out little Jimmy has been left without his portion. Someone has taken two buckets. Is it Uncle Patrick? He looks suspicious. Or maybe Lauren's son Justin? He's wearing this creepy knowing smile. Or could little Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings in his bag with toys to get another portion? Look at the dog. It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. Look at these two girls in their fridges. One of them has never had enough money until recently, when she won the lottery. Which girl is that? It's the girl on the left. High heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like a person who has finally managed to get their hands on some big money. Lisa was a millionaire's daughter. She was fed up with her dad trying to control her life. After he told her one day he'd found a fiancé for her, she decided to run away from home. She took enough money and the most discreet car she could find in the garage and left. The girl knew her father would send his people to bring her back. That's why she never stayed in one hotel for more than one night. One day, she found herself in a small town. It was getting dark, and she had no choice but to stop at the first hotel she saw. The receptionist said her room number was 710 and offered to show her where it was. Lisa immediately grabbed her bag, ran out of the hotel, jumped in the car, and sped away. Why? The first digit of a hotel room number usually means the floor it's on. Room 710 is supposed to be on the seventh floor, but the hotel only has two floors. A little girl walks through the park and spots a hungry cat. She decides to share her sandwich with a poor animal. Unfortunately, there's a stream between her and the kitty. She squats down to attract the cat's attention and shows it the food. In no time, the animal is next to it. There's no bridge over the stream, and the cat isn't soaked. How is it possible? It's winter, and the stream's frozen. Hey there! Are you ready for another brain workout today? Because I have 30 new riddles for you. I'll show you a pair of people for each one, and you'll have to decide which person doesn't behave wisely. You'll have 7 seconds per riddle to make your decision. Every right answer will award you one point. Ready? Grab a pencil and a piece of paper, and let's get started. Charlotte and Elizabeth are doing some homework. Charlotte is going to iron some clothes, and Elizabeth is about to cook. Who's not being smart? Elizabeth, 
Charlotte's safe because the iron is turned off. Lucas and Liam are going on a field trip with their kids. Lucas is distracted while his daughter is climbing a tree. Liam is talking to another parent while his son is petting a dog. Who is wrong? Lucas. The branch his daughter is climbing is cracking, and she is about to fall. Ava and Olivia are finally leaving home for their first night out after maternity leave. Ava decides to walk, and Olivia is waiting for a taxi. Who is not ready? Olivia. She forgot to finish her makeup. Michael and Logan are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Michael is taking a selfie while surfing on a huge wave, and Logan is taking one standing on the edge of a bridge. Who is not smart? Michael. In Logan's case, at least there are people around who can call emergency services if something goes wrong. Michael is alone. It's early morning. Ian and Nolan are driving their kids to school. Who is not smart? Nolan. His child is not in the car. Jackson and Emma are volunteering at an animal shelter. Jackson is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is wrong? Jackson. He gave the cats dog food by mistake. Scarlett and Ellie are going to bed. Scarlett kept her door open so her cat could enter during the night, while Ellie prefers to close her door. Who is not smart? Scarlett. You should always close your bedroom door at night. In case of fire, it'll stop the flames for a while and give you more time. Riley and Isabella are taking their kids to kindergarten. Riley is riding a bike with her daughter, and Isabella and her son are going by car. Who is wrong? Isabella. Her child isn't wearing a seatbelt. Lily and Oliver have job interviews at 4 o'clock. Lily is ironing her best suit, and Oliver is waiting in the hallway wearing jeans. Who's not getting the job today? Lily. She must have forgotten the time. The interview is in 5 minutes, and she's still at home. Sophia and Aiden are working in the garden. Sophia is watering the flowers while her cat is walking around. Aiden is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who's not smart? Aiden. It's dangerous to use the lawnmower when children are close by. John and Brandon are making breakfast for their kids. John is making sandwiches, and Brandon is making eggs with bacon. Who is wrong? Brandon. He forgot to turn on the stove. Thomas and Abigail are going on a date. Thomas arrived a half an hour early and decided to buy some flowers. Abigail just returned from London and is driving to meet him. Who is wrong? Abigail. She's driving on the left side of the road. Ryan and Kaylee are having fun outside during their Christmas break. Ryan is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kaylee is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Ryan. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help him. Asher and Haley are enjoying their vacations. Asher is chilling at the beach, and Haley is climbing the highest mountain around. Who is not behaving wisely? (laughs) 
Asher. Although Haley's activity is quite risky, she seems to be okay. But Asher fell asleep at the beach and is going to get a sunburn. Chloe and Avery are having some quality time on Friday. Chloe is reading a book, and Avery is watching a documentary. Who is missing something? Avery. She forgot to turn off the oven, and something's burning. Hannah and Maya are meeting their friends today. Hannah arrived by bike and is waiting for her friend by the house. Maya arrived by car, opened the doors, and is waiting for her friend to come down. Who is not smart? Maya. It's not safe to stay in the car with unlocked doors. A stranger can quickly get in the car and she wouldn't be able to do anything from the front seat. Mason and Jacob are going on a trip to the desert, where they'll spend the whole day. Who is not adequately prepared? Mason. The sun is powerful, and he's not wearing a hat. Emily and Madison are spending their time outdoors, but it's not their lucky day. Emily stumbled and fell in some mud. Madison was swinging but fell. Now, they both are getting up. Who made a mistake? Madison. The swing is still moving, and it may hit her head if she gets up. Aubrey and James are cleaning the house. Aubrey is listening to music while vacuuming the living room, and James is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Aubrey. The vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Mia and Ethan are going on summer vacation. Mia is going to Greece, and Ethan is visiting his brother in Sydney. Who is not smart? Ethan. He's packed shorts and swimwear, but he won't need them because it's winter in Australia. Carter and Layla are in a hurry for work. Carter is walking while talking on his phone, and Layla is running while texting. Who's going to be late? Layla. She's looking at her phone and doesn't see the pit she's about to walk into. Leah and Aaron are driving to meet their friends. Leah has all of her things scattered in the car. And Aaron is traveling above the speed limit. Who is not smart? Leah. It's not safe to keep unprotected things inside the car. In case she stops suddenly, something can hit her very hard. William and Daniel are driving and are late for work. Who is wrong? Daniel, he's driving way above the speed limit in the neighborhood. Jane and Amelia are resting in the park after running 5 miles. Jane is eating, and Amelia is drinking water from the fountain. Who is not smart? Amelia, the warning sign says that the water isn't drinkable. Max and Ezra were driving around the desert and got stuck in the middle of nowhere. They burned a spare tire to produce some smoke. Max stayed close to the tire, and Ezra walked away in search of something helpful. Who is not smart? Ezra, you should never leave the vehicle. Chances are the rescuers will notice the smoke and find you. But if you go, you might miss them. Both Jonathan and Savannah didn't sleep well and are starting their morning. While Savannah is preparing some coffee, Jonathan is taking out the trash. Who is doing something wrong? Jonathan. Instead of the trash, he's taking out the old toys they collected to donate. 
Stella and Aurora didn't study for the test. One of them decided to try her best, and the other is planning to cheat. Can you spot who's cheating? Stella. She has a lot of bags surrounding her, so she must be trying to hide something. Miles and Cooper were walking in a park when a sudden storm erupted. Lightning struck a tree, and Miles decided to hide under it. Cooper entered a little shack nearby. Who is wrong? Miles. The belief that lightning never strikes in the same place twice is just a common misconception. An indoor shelter is one of the best places to hide. Leo and Melanie are preparing a barbecue party. Leo is cooking, and Melanie is decorating the yard. Who is not smart? Leo. While he's cooking, the meat is spoiling in the direct sun. Congrats! That's it for today. Now, sum up your points. If you got 10 points or less, you scored below average. Eh, don't be sad. It's just the beginning. You can check out some other riddles to train and prepare for the next round. If you got between 10 and 25 points, you scored average. Great! You're on the right way. And finally, if you got 26 points or more, you're in great intellectual shape. Here's an interactive medal from me and my admiration. Good for you!